Let's talk about Geist 2. There's not any data I can pull up regarding Geist 1's performance in the 80s, but it's safe to assume it didn't do that well and was met with a pretty lukewarm reception. There was this company called Gaga Communications who tried selling it to a Western audience. MD Geist. Otherwise known as Thunder Warrior. It didn't work. This was almost the end of Geist. That is until this guy named John O'Donnell founded this media distribution company called Central Park Media in 1990. CPM had a division called US Manga Corps, and what do you know, look at our boy Geist on their logo. Your early American otaku was seeing this cool armor guy, and as a result, Geist 1 grew a bit of a cult following. Meanwhile in Japan, Koichi Ohada had been constantly begging his higher-ups to let him make a sequel for years. Lucky for him, O'Donnell was probably the biggest MD Geist fan in human history. Enough to the point where he was willing to fund half the sequel's budget. MD Geist 2, Death Force, would release in 1996 alongside the director's cut of the first OVA I reviewed a video ago, which would polish up the animation and audio as well as add some additional scenes. This was also when the English dub for both Geists was produced too. It's standard stuff when it comes to early anime dubs, but Geist's voice is pretty cool I will admit. The game's not over yet. It's just beginning. There's also this motion comic thing. As for the story of Geist 2, it kicks off in the aftermath of Death Force's activation, where we find killer robots terrorizing the remnants of humanity. Right off the bat, the violence in the OVA is ramped up quite a bit compared to the first one and we see a group of survivors quickly get torn apart by Death Force robots before Guy swoops in and saves the day. Not because he cares, but because he does this kind of thing for sport. He kills all the robots in the area, does nothing to help the one survivor of the attack, and fucks off while on fire to one of the hardest intro themes ever. After this intro, we find ourselves in a refugee camp where there's talk of a haven led by a single man who's capable of taking on the Death Force. We're not here to watch a bunch of unnamed background characters live normal lives though, so of course they get attacked by killer robots until an armored soldier rescues them. This guy's name's Krauser, and he's blue for some reason. He's a former MDS, just like Geist, but instead of using his power to kill everything in sight, he simply uses it to employ child labor at his slave plant survivor colony. Now right off the bat, I think Krauser as a character accomplishes what Colonel Kreutz from Geist 1 failed to do which is to be a rival to Geist. Do you even remember Colonel Kreutz? No you fucking don't. Krauser is equal in strength, but also has a skill for leadership. He also has a mad god complex, and you get to see how that plays out as he tries to hunt Geist down and kill him. Fun fact, like Geist, Krauser's named after a professional wrestler too. He's named after this guy, uh, Charles Eastaz, who wrestled under several names, one of them being, wouldn't you know, Carl Krauser. Eastaz became famous in the Japan pro wrestling scene, earning the title of God of Wrestling, hence Krauser's God Complex. He also invented the German suplex, which you may have seen referenced before in a lot of different things. But enough about wrestling. Did you know that Death Force robots can reproduce? Let's look at the distribution of Death Force units. There are about 900 units, but they have the ability to reproduce. Throughout the entire development process of Death Force, no one thought it was a bad idea that the army of autonomous killer robots could also reproduce. It's contrived bullshit, but that's Krauser's problem, not ours. Instead, we follow a cyborg named Eagle who's tasked with a mission to capture Geist, which he does after a very bizarre fight between the two. The two of them end up captured by the enemy Nexrum army, with Geist unconscious and Eagle a torso. I'm being really specific about this for a reason, because what's about to happen is kind of stupid. Geist somehow fights his way out of captivity, but then the scene cuts to him captive in a lab inside Krauser's colony. Thankfully, the part where Geist breaks out and escapes more than makes up for this. This shit is so cool. This is the part where I felt Ohara and Sanjo perfectly showed the savage side of Guy's character. In a little over two minutes, he eats a guy's face, and then Krauser's arm, and then survives Krauser throwing him off a skyscraper. With Guy's temporarily out of the picture, Krauser teams up with Jera's rival army, Nexrum, to nuke Death Force out of existence. And Nexrum General tries to have Krauser killed in the detonation, while Eagle and Geist team up to try to nuke Krauser and his colony out of existence. These next five minutes are priceless. 
You get to watch guys ruin everyone's day one more time. Everyone extend your wings! John, what's wrong? Open your wings! He ambushes Krauser's squad mid-operation and causes the general ship to crash, consequently setting off the nuke on accident. Meanwhile, Geist is baiting Death Force into following the Krauser's colony, while Krauser is chasing him practically in tears. Krauser's colony and God Complex are collapsing, along with his sanity, and Geist challenges him to a final duel. There's no hope for anyone anymore, and the OVA even changes its color scheme to reflect this. As a last resort, Geist charges Krauser, who tries to impale him with a pole. And as a final fuck you, Geist uses a child as a human shield and Krauser impales both of them. Geist gets his last laugh in and completely destroys whatever remains of Krauser's sanity right as the nukes go off and kill almost everyone. The second half of Geist 2 is what makes this OVA for me. The first half is a little lacking in comparison, but both Geist 1 and 2 are about 40 minutes each, so it doesn't take that long to get to the good stuff. Overall, I prefer this one to the first, as I think it was a little hard for Ohada to settle on what he wanted to do with MD Geist as a concept in the first OVA. In my opinion, he was able to better realize this concept in its sequel, and I was really glad to see how Koichi Ohada and Riku Sanjo develop as director and screenwriter throughout these two OVAs. The plot is still all over the place, but it's not like you watch something like this for the story anyways. I'd give it like a five and a half. Thanks for watching.